Worldwide, mental health problems are now one of the leading causes of disability in young people. In fact, 75% of all mental health problems first emerge before the age of 24. And in many, these disorders will become recurrent throughout the lifespan. But why should this be of interest to participants in the World Economic Forum? While the cost of mental health care to our economies is increasing rapidly, figures from, for example, our host country, China, show an increase of the cost of mental health care from 21 billion in 2005 to 89 billion dollars in 2013. And the costs are not limited to health care. Recent estimates show from um, Australia that the Australian economy expects to lose close to 3 trillion Australian dollars due to reduced workforce participation from individuals experiencing mental health problems. Yet, despite the scale of the problem, we currently lack efficient and accessible interventions. In some countries, as many as 90% of people with severe mental health problems are left without care. Waiting times for access to evidence-based care can be months, even in high-income countries, sometimes years. Also, when people actually receive uh, the best psychological and pharmacological treatments available, only approximately 60% will benefit from these treatments. As such, there is an urgent need to develop new interventions that are more efficient and accessible. And so to do that, my work is focusing on psychological and neuroscience research. In particular, a particularly promising avenue of investigation is emotion regulation. In everyday life, we're surrounded by information that carries emotional value. It can be minor, such as a message alert, or major, such as the memory of a traumatic event. Our uh, abilities to react to these emotional reactions um, can influence our everyday functioning. So imagine, for example, the CEO who, on his way into work, gets deeply affected by a news story he's reading. Yet, as soon as he walks through the door, he refocuses his attention on the tasks at hand, thereby diminishing the distress he just felt moments before. And so in our everyday life, to function well at work, have successful relationships, we often need to regulate our emotions. When we investigate this in the lab, we have seen that individuals who are psychologically healthy can continue to perform highly complex tasks even when we present them with emotional information. In contrast, individuals who suffer from mental health problems show a breakdown in emotion regulation, and this is true across a wide range of mental health problems, making it a promising target for intervention. We developed a cognitive training app that trains one of the cognitive building blocks of emotion regulation and the brain regions it relies on. And we showed that individuals who trained on this app improved their ability to regulate their emotions. When we looked at the brain activation of the people who completed the training, we saw enhanced activation or that the improvement was linked to activation in regions that support emotion regulation in the lateral prefrontal cortices. Therefore, we were confident that we're actually training a process that is central to emotion regulation. Our work started in adults, but from developmental neuroscience, we know that the brain regions on which emotion regulation relies develop throughout adolescence. And adolescence is also a peak time of onset for mental health problems. It may therefore be a particularly promising time to enhance emotion regulation. Our initial work in refugees from Iran who have post-traumatic stress disorder showed that the training boosted their emotion regulation and reduced their symptoms of post-traumatic stress. We're now looking at whether it's possible to use the training to prevent the onset of mental health problems in adolescents or whether it could be maybe used to enhance the effectiveness of existing treatments. This training is just one example of a neuroscientifically informed intervention that's made accessible through technology to anyone with internet access. These type of interventions are very much needed in a world where many countries of the total healthcare budget, only 1% is going to mental health care. So we also need these new interventions to deal with the rapidly rising rates of mental health problems in young people. But to do this, we will need innovative science and we will need policies and investments that recognize the long-term impact of mental health problems on human suffering, as well as societal and economic productivity. Thank you.